This is not an HIV patient, but I'll present a very rare case. This is a case presentation. This is a five-year-old boy. He had sudden painless loss of vision in both eyes uh, for 11 days. Parents was obviously very concerned. He consulted the local ophthalmologist and has put on only topical steroids and cyclopregics. His history is very remarkable of having a maculopapular rash over his thighs and buttocks and a fever which lasted for four days. He has anti antenatal, prenat perinatal and postnatal history as non-contributory. Vaccination dose as per the Indian National Vaccination Schedule. Both base culture visual acuity is uh, distance vision 3 by 60 in both eyes, near vision in 24. External examination showed no abnormality. Antisemite normal except some mild circumcongenital congestion, otherwise quiet. And look at the fundus. There is a total perivenous shaking of the vessels and uh, you can see the both eyes have got symmetrical picture and they are exudates over the macular area. We did the autofluorescence, autofluorescence picked up the uh, hyper autofluorescence at the macular area showing that the uh, uh, plaque like lesion. Fundus fluorescent angiogram swept source. Uh, within and doing the vessels to the corresponding doesn't show much information and um, some disc and perivascular leakage was seen. And this is Swepsos optical coherence tomography. It showed subretinal fluid. It can, you can see the subretinal fluid along with the hard exudates along with the hyperreflective foci. And SSOCTA showed uh, superficial and deep capillary plexus highlight areas of flow wide area in the right and left eye, respectively. What could be the diagnosis? Obviously, it's a frosted branch angitis, but what could be the cause? So, it's important to do as uh, Dr. Uh, Shoma was telling that to do that uh, investigations. In fact, there is a lot of investigations in this case was done complete and differential blood count within normal limit, Mantua was negative, chest excess there are may see liver function test, blood urea creatinine normal limits. In such cases, no, you need to do that lot of investigations. And the children, serology may be helpful, Toxoplasma gondii, herpes simplex, varicella virus, cytomegalovirus, treponoma pallidum, HIV all negative. What came out positive is the anti-rubella antibody. Uh, there's a 44.08 international unit per ml and anti EBV highway is a high sky high for 420 international unit per ml. Actually, this has been advised by Dr. Narsila, whom I consulted. He said that do the uh, ABV virus serology. So, EBV virus uh, IgG was positive, mm, 420 normal is 0 to 18 is the IgG level. And there's a mild hypochromic microcystic anemia was. So diagnosis is based on the clinical and insulin investigation, bilateral frosted branch angiitis, and possible cause was Epstein-Barr virus. Pediatric consultation was obtained, and the patient was put on intravenous methylprednisone based on the severity of the inflammation, 250 milligram per day for three consecutive days, oral steroid 20 milligram per day according to the body weight, Oral val acyclovir 500 milligram thrice a day, and you can see that there's a the patient had sequential examination over six months, and there's a complete resolution of uh, retinal vasculitis, and fortunately the base cutted visual acuity improved significantly. 6.9 in the right eye, 6.15 in the left eye. There was a scar over the macular area in the uh, left eye but the right eye is almost nil. So what is very interesting is that we did the anti-EBV titer again, and there's a decline in the anti-EBV titer uh, post-treatment, 225.11 uh, international unit per ml. So this is a case of frosted branch angitis, which is a rare but severe form of retinal vasculitis. We tend to see it in HIV-positive patients more commonly, and um, 
is classified in the two types based on the presence of underlying ocular and systemic inflammation. It can be primary idiopathic or it can be immunocompromised as I mentioned, CMB infection, toxoplasmosis. There are incidences of report of TB, systemic lupus erythematous, basis, Crohn's, leukemia and lymphoma has been described. So our case with the history of rash and fever and decline in the anti ebv titer and responsiveness to uh, steroid therapy, EBV seems to the most possible etiology in this case. So we looked in the literature there before us, there's a one case of frosted bunch angiitis after the Epstein Barr virus in a seven year old boy has been reported. And our is the next case which was published in the ocular immunology and inflammation, this multimodal imaging in a case of bilateral frosted bunch angiitis in a five year old boy, secondary to the Epstein Barr virus infection. So I look forward for your comments. Such an interesting case. Actually, we would have never thought of EBV at all. <laughs> uh, Can so, I, uh, yeah, no, go ahead. I was going to ask, like, what might be the pathology, you know, pathogenesis that goes behind frosted branch? I mean, we typically see retinal vasculitis as skip or confluent lesions, yeah. but this involves the entire. And we know that frosted branch happens with so many organisms. So what might be happening which is different in frosted branch compared to other? Uh... I'm not very sure about that frosted branch angiitis, but I it, it feels that it's a kind of a severe uh, inflammation. The type of the inflammation is much more severe than the normal uh, uh, is acute and uh, is severe and uh, it produces a lot of times the macular changes. So most of the frosted branch which uh, has so, been reported are in children. So is it yeah. anything to do with their immune system, the robust immune system which probably would have... I, I really don't know. Can it be because EB virus causes infectious mononucleosis? Yes. It causes Burkitt lymphoma. Again, you see those are basically a B cell lymphoma, no, they can have a vasculitis component which is much more evident. Can it be a reason for that, sir? I'm not sure. So, I'm not, I just want to think when uh, even when you find so much of vasculitis in otherwise non frosted branch, so you get occlusive features in the periphery, but in frosted branch, you don't get. So, is no, it less severe than that? Does it mean that it's a relatively less kind of vasculitis compared to the other one? I would. Uh... I would rather see that is a whole basis a sheet. So I would rather. So how much should we rely that? upon EB virus? Because we have a study together where like we, it was incidental finding in one uh, set of CMV retinitis patients, and we did intraocular specimen evaluation about 15 years back. So uh, in a children, uh, in a children with EB virus, high uh, uh, titer and then dropping of the uh, viral serology is indicated. Post treatment is an indication. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So let's move on to the. Sorry, uh, one last question. So, uh, the before the result, uh, as the patient had severe inflammation, we didn't wait for that uh, serology results. We started the IVMP. But ideally, it should be given under cover of antiviral medication. This is not a typical viral retinitis presentation. So that way probably you, we got away with it. But otherwise probably the take home message is when you suspect viral, then don't give IVMP. So probably you start off uh, investigations and at the most you can have oral uh, anti-inflammatory therapy, but not uh, local steroids again. 